Hello everyone, in this video we are going to talk about Abrapsio placenta. What is the definition of Abrapsio placenta? Bleeding due to separation of the placenta. But as, as we have seen in our channel, we don't discuss anything without understanding the concept. So, what is Abrapsio placenta? What is the difference between placenta previa and Abrapsio placenta? In both things separation happens. The placental separation from its bed happens. That's why the vascular sinuses and channels are open and bleeding happens. Hemorrhage happens. It happens in both varieties. Abrapsio placenta, placenta previa. But what is Abrapsio placenta? In here, the placenta is attached in the upper uterine segment. Like normally it should be. While in placenta previa, it was attached into the lower uterine segment, which it should not be. All, almost all placenta, most of the placenta. The incidence was 3%. Sorry, 0.3% in placenta previa. So only 0.3% placenta only uh, are present in lower uterine segment in term pregnancy. Only 0.3%. All other placentas are implanted in upper segment. So what, what happens in abruptio placenta? Is a separation of placenta which is implanted into upper segment so you know the basic difference now normally what happens placental separation happens in third stage but here it is happening before the th uh, the thir third stage has been reached even in the second stage if placental separation happens it's also called abrupt placenta remember so what is the incidence it's not very very uncommon it's very common one of 200 pregnancy it's not very common sorry it's not very uncommon you know if if you are working in a government hospital and there are so much of patient you are seeing every day and you must find one or two abruptio placenta every day so let's discuss about the risk factors what can be the risk factors see normally what happens placenta all almost all placenta implant in upper uterine segment but there is some problem that the placenta is just get separated from that bed what can be that problem it can be a trauma it can be a uh, negative a negative pressure like happens in sudden rupture of membrane if there is a sudden rupture of membrane then there is a negative pressure in the uterus that's why it it, it can also separate there can be mechanic such a mechanical causes are also there and uh, if we talk about nutrition it's common in lower socioeconomic status so nutrition is also making a part in the pathophysiology of abruptio placenta folic acid deficiency if you see increasing maternal age cigarette cocaine abuse all these things are associated with diminished nutrition okay now thrombophilia thrombophilia is also one of the reason of placenta abruption preeclampsia my friends the very very common cause of abruptio placenta in routine uh, hospital is what preeclampsia it can be a leomyoma because the structural problem is there large placenta it's a very large placenta so somehow somewhere the placenta is going to separate premature rupture of membrane can be there sorry my friends dogs are barking behind a lockdown is really really problematic for them also sorry let's con uh, let's concentrate on the class oh my god there is a pledge classification the classification is page name is page there are four stages again i am 
again I am discussing with you why we classify something in medicine. We classify something in medicine to have a complete management plan of each and every category. We can discuss this category with our other colleagues and it can be used in a research paper, research purposes. So we classify the, any of the uh, categories or any of the thing in medicine. So here also we are classifying the thing. What is the base behind classification? The base behind page classification is the severity of abruptio placenta and how we have to manage each and every stage of this classification. The management is different for every class, every class of this classification. So with, with this in our mind, we have classified into four categories. What is the zero? Zero means retrospective diagnosis. That means the delivery is happens already third stage has been done and when you separate when you see the placenta which came out from the uterus you see a very large blood clot behind this so it's a concealed type of abruptio placenta you can only diagnose after delivery so retrospective diagnosis made on basis of retrospective diagnosis okay that is zero now number one number one is what bleeding pv pain in abdomen fsh is plus that means the patient comes to you with bleeding pv abdominal pain and contractions but if you examine her you find that the fsh is perfectly fine that means the baby is good baby is alive number two is bleeding pv pain in abdomen but fetal status is not very good fetal distress is there so it's the category two the category three is bleeding pv pain in abdomen here the fetal death is there intrauterine death already happened there so the abruptio placenta is the one of the leading cause of intrauterine death also it can be shock also present with this thing Coagula coagulation disorder can be there anything can be there in stage 3 or category 3 now the types of abruptio placenta is two types concealed variety and revealed variety concealed means blood what what concealed means you need to hide something the blood is hiding behind the placenta doesn't doesn't come out and in the revealed variety the blood can blood is not hiding inside the placenta back side of the placenta it just comes out so this is the same, same similar thing what happens in concealed thing is when the blood clot is uh, blood clot forming behind the placenta the uterine side size increases okay because the clot is not a small one you know if even 500 to 1 liter of clot can be there it's not a small clot so this this volume of this blood clot increases the volume of uterus so the uterine size is above more than the gestational age but in revealed variety is not like that okay the there is a one uh, uh, one term and one thing very interesting thing is there is covalier uterus what is covalier uterus for example this is the uterus these are the muscle layer uterine muscle layer there are layers in the mus uterine muscle layer you know this thing so these are the muscle layers now the blood uh, the blood clot that happen in concealed variety blood clot just blood just pass in between two uh, two layers of the myometrium all over the uterus that is called covalier uterus okay but it it, it can uh, it can heal so we don't need to do hysterectomy for this thing if you find the uterus if you palpate the uterus uterus feel is very very woody hard uterus because already the baby is inside the uterus already amniotic fluid inside the uterus so there is a pressure inside the uterus and again even 500 to 1 liter of blood clots is formed inside the uterus that's why the 
टेंशन इन इंट्राउट्राइन टेंशन इज वेरी 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 हाई सो द वुडी नेचर इज फेल्ट वेन यू पालपेट द यूट्रस एंड दिस इज माई माई फ्रेंड दिस इज वेरी डेंजरस वेन एवर यू सी द वेरी वेरी स्ट्रॉन्ग यूट्राइन कॉन्ट्रेक्शन only that second you the question in your mind should be that that the baby inside the uterus cannot breathing cannot breathe with this so much high pressure so even uterine contraction in normal delivery whenever the very very strong uterine contraction is there very very strong and long lasting uterine contraction is there the second thing second thought in your mind should be what the baby is not able to breathe while this contraction is there so if you find a patient with abruptus placenta the uterus is very hard stony hard woody hard that means that and rigid that means that the baby inside the uterus must be having distress this is a clinical this these are some clinical things you don't need to do every time the ctg machine no that yes there is a distress whenever you see a woody hard uterus you must diagnose that yes there is a distress of fetus fetal parts even cannot be palpated because uterus is so tense but in revealed variety these things are not very very prominent now what is the management management is very simple termination of pregnancy we cannot wait and watch we earlier the possible we should terminate the pregnancy because more and more time is there the clot is becoming bigger and bigger or the um, there is a hypovolemic shock is ongoing in the mother and with these things you know the present this all this uh, tissue is exposing under the blood so it will cause what coagulation hypercoagulation state and with patient will go into very very coag uh, uh, hypercoagulation and dic also so you sh- you cannot wait you have to deliver the baby which faster method is available obviously whenever there is a distress a very s- distress very fetal distress you need to do what obviously there is a emergency cesarean section okay you don't have the time to get the baby delivered you know okay if there is no distress then you can assess the cervix you can see the bishop score of the cervix if it is favorable just do rupture of membrane and augmentation of labor not with oxytocin see oxytocin because already woody hard nature is there and you cannot give more oxytocin it will itself deliver you know the uterine contraction is so strong uterine uterus is already hyper stimulated irritated you don't need to give estrogen sorry you did you don't need to give oxytocin you must give what you do what is rupture of membrane and that's it the baby will be delivered in no time if the cervix is not favorable again i have said don't wait and watch do cesarean section and whenever you do cesarean section or whenever you do a delivery of antepartum hemorrhage be, uh, patient you must have the thought in your mind that yes it is a potential cause of pre ph okay it's not a it's not a easy delivery it's a high risk delivery the chances of pph are so high the chances of coagulability are also high all these things like less uh, hyper stim- hyper coagulability dic and uh, de- uh, diminish the blood uh, diminished coagulable uh, co- uh, coagulation factors in the blood all these things will definitely cause what pph so you are ready for that how you will be ready for that whenever the antepartum hemorrhage patient comes to you first of all what you do is you do a li- liver coagulation profile along with the routine investigation and also prepare or uh, blood products with coagulable with coagulation factors like prps platelet rich plasmas 
coagulation factors all this blood product you should be ready with when you deliver such a patient okay now this was all about abruptio placenta thank you